No, baby, that's for somebody else. We're just going to keep you right where you're at right now. It doesn't matter what you think. The Wrestling Realm presents Break It Down with Brian H. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to break the fourth wall. So, I did a show, and for whatever reason, the audio did not want to work. So, I'm doing this again. Um, ah, you know, I'm trying something different, trying to switch it up a little bit, give you a little bit more of me. Um, so, right here on YouTube, uh, you know, welcome to the wrestling realm. So, before we get started, make sure you are following the wrestling realm on YouTube, subscribe right here, you know, subscribe down low when you finish. And then also make sure you are following us at tw on Twitter at Wrestling Realm. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and guess what? Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Google Play or Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, you name it. We are there. So, folks, Charlotte Flair is on her way to WrestleMania courtesy of of Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Who saw that coming? <laughs> I think we all did, but I don't know if we necessarily saw it happen in this way. I know there are a lot of people who are not happy with this decision. Here's my thing. Let the storyline play out. Charlotte would come on SmackDown this past Tuesday and just talk about how She's going to go out there and win the title for her best friend, Becky Lynch. She's going to go do it for her and how Becky, um, how, you know, she reminded, like, look, when Becky couldn't compete, it was her who she, it was Charlotte who she called on. And she talked about Becky just being such a hothead, not being responsible, you know. She got herself in that situation going on to Monday Night Raw and then gets her nose broken where she couldn't compete. And now she's just being a hothead and can't, um, you know, and that's why Vince McMahon does not like her attitude. So I thought that was interesting. I know a lot of people do not like it. Take your time, folks. Calm down. Remember, Charlotte has been the best women's wrestler over the past two and a half maybe three years and she deserves to have her name when they say the main event of wrestlemania charlotte flair deserves to be there if anybody i don't want in the match it's ronda rousey you know somebody i understand she's a megastar i get that but somebody who just comes into the wwe from another world but they're in the business to sell tickets they're not in the business to make wrestling fans happy the hardcore fans is not going to pay for the product anyway um so you know i get it it's wrestlemania you know you want to see the best wrestler but it's always about sports entertainment you know let's not forget roddy piper and mr t took on each other at a wrestlemania um in the first wrestlemania had a celebrity and that was mr t hogan and mr t you think other wrestlers weren't complaining but it was, that was a different era. And so this is what WrestleMania has been built on. This is what I know. So therefore, I'm not complaining. I get it. It makes sense. So, you know, Becky Lynch, what happens with her? You know, um, she was out there with Triple H and Stephanie McMahon earlier uh, on Raw. And they were an apology. And how did we get here with her not being in a match was... Because she took all night, and she, she did give the apology, which some people didn't like. But, you know, she gave it, and I took it as, all right, I'm going to give you this apology. But look, after this, I'm going on to Raw, I mean, on to WWE WrestleMania, and I'm going to kick butt. But Vince Man said, no, that's not going to happen. So, Becky will end up in there, folks. We'll just, we just got to wait and see. Let's let it play out. So, let's move on to the Women's Elimination Chamber match. Um, so, we had two sets of triple threat tag team matches where the winners, uh, well, I should say the losers, would be entered into the ring first. So, on Raw, we saw Nia Jax and Bayley, uh, Nia Jax pinned Bayley to make sure that Sasha and Bayley were the first 
entrance into the chamber. Don't be surprised if they go the distance. Just don't be. But then on SmackDown, we saw Mandy Rose finally getting hers when Naomi pinned her to make sure that Mandy and Sonya would be the ones that would have to enter the chamber first. So, um, really enjoyed this match. Didn't like it. We got it last week. They couldn't have made the stipulation last week. But nonetheless, thought it was interesting. Um, and so, where do we go from here? Only time will tell. But what I do wonder, what does this leave for Oscar? Who's going to be ready for Oscar come WrestleMania? Because, you know, there's nobody on the SmackDown roster that I can really see challenging her. So, you know, maybe Sonya Deville, if they build her right. And I hate to be that guy, but, you know, that's what I'm thinking. You know, if you build Sonya right, then maybe. But right now, I just don't see anybody challenging Oscar that's on the main roster. Shoot, perhaps Bailey, if Sasha's hurt, because we know what's going on with her. So if she gets hurt, maybe Bailey jumps over. But let's roll into this week's top rope. Going up to the top rope. It's time for this week's top rope segment of the week. Top rope this week, folks. Kofi Kingston's performance. If you watch SmackDown, you saw the Elimination Chamber match participants take place in a gauntlet match. And it started off with, with, I have to say, Mustafa Ali will not be at the Elimination Chamber due to injury. It was a member of the New Day who replaced him, and they chose Kofi. Kofi, is this going to be finally his time? They made the reference. He's everything but the WWE champion, you know. So is this going to be his time? Kofi going out there, putting on a hell of a performance. Unfortunately, you know, he was, you know, kind of, Samoa Joe beat him up. And what I like was he had that dog in him. He said no. When AJ Styles said, look, man, just go ahead. Let's, you know, regroup. We'll take on each other next, uh, you know, we'll see each other in the chamber. He said, no, I waited and waited for this. This is my time. Showed that dog in him. And then AJ Styles beat him. But then it was the Viper Randy Orton coming in with a RKO. One, two, three. That simple, quick, fast, in a hurry. And if Randy Orton hits enough RKOs like that, he can easily be your new WWE champion. So I'm looking forward to this match. I got Daniel Bryan winning. But, um, you know, he's not going to enter last. He did in 2012, which led to him retaining his World Heavyweight Championship. But how often, awesome, how awesome would it be if Kofi Kingston could win the WWE Championship in Black, or in Black History Month? In the Elimination Chamber. I mean, Naomi won her first title in February at Elimination Chamber that year. Uh, so, who knows? I know a lot of people don't think. But I think if this is done right, Kofi could be the guy to challenge Daniel Bryan. If you build the uh, story of he's done it all but, and you build him up, then maybe, just maybe, and I know I'm going way out on the limb, Kofi could be the guy to challenge DB. Now I'm going to get into this week's Tapped Out. Here's our Tapped Out segment of the week. So this week's Tapped Out, folks, Seth Rollins and Paul Heyman back and forth on the microphone. Um, I was talking to my good brother, Glenn Thomas, and we were saying, like, look, if Seth Rollins is in, you know, this is supposed to be him about him and Brock. Brock ain't out there. What good is this? I'm sitting there thinking. I said, you know what? As I thought about this deeper, I would rather see Seth Rollins kind of training. You know, what Shawn Michaels was doing. Um, I know this won't be his first rodeo as champion, but I would just rather see him do that than come out there and do all this stuff and talking all this trash. You know, I'm just not buying it, you know. Um, you know, because it sounds like more and more he's trying to psych himself up to get himself to believe that he can beat Brock Lesnar as opposed to, you know, convincing us. So, um, you know, that's why I just tapped out this week. You know, Raw was boring. I'm going to be real with you. Raw was boring. I, you know, I was kind of ready to fall asleep. So, I was just leaving it at that. Let me take my first break. 
This is Ashley Ann Baker, and I am the host of the newest, hottest show about nothing but sports brought to you by Barn Burner. Make sure you guys tune into the show every Thursday night where you'll get real, raw sports talk. Make sure you guys also keep up with us on Twitter at Sports A and B. Back to Break It Down with Brian H. Waters, brought to you by the Wrestling Realm. So, make sure you check out my homegirl, Ashley Nicole Baker's podcast, about nothing but sports, folks. You know, she's um, her and a good buddy Andre they talk about NBA, NFL, and a couple other things. Uh, just got booked for the show. You know, I'm gonna be on there talking some baseball, but of course, I just got booked for WrestleMania season. So I'm looking forward to joining her on the show. Um, but make sure you check it out on iTunes. Um, you can definitely follow me at Brian H. Waters, I'll be retweeting, reposting, etc. So let's get into let's talk. We got new tag team champions, folks. Finally. It's done. Dash and Wilder, the Revival, are your new WWE Raw Tag Team Champions. Something we never thought we was going to get. But these guys went out there. They got it done. So shout out to them, Beat and Gable and Bobby Roode. And they promised to bring tag team, the, the tag team division right where it's supposed to be, right where it should be. So I'm really excited. These guys deserve it. Um, so... You know, let's see. Let's see what they got for us. I mean, I would definitely love to see Tag Team Division ramped up a little bit more. I do think after the WrestleMania um, season, we will get some teams maybe go over. Maybe it's the Bar. Maybe it's the New Day. Maybe it's the Usos. Who knows? Uh, speaking of the Usos, though, these guys um, will be set to take on Shane McMahon and The Miz, the besties. We saw them take them, let them know, welcome to the Uso Penitentiary. So that makes you wonder, what's going to happen? Is Shane McMahon and Miz ready for this? Or is this a way for Miz to turn on Shane? Or perhaps Shane to turn on Miz? Who knows? But I did like their um, back and forth. I like how the Usos reminded them. Look, you guys, y'all just became buddies. We've been, you know, I know everything about this guy, my tag team partner, more than he knows about himself. So I thought that was really cool. Um, let's move on. Let's step outside of WWE world. We got a new IWGP heavyweight champion, and his name is the Switchblade J. Wright. J. White. Um, shout out to the real Dwayne Allen. Told me about this guy. He said, this is the guy. I can tell you one thing. My brother knows talent. Make sure you follow him at Dwayne Allen 24 because he knows his stuff. Um, he's been a huge fan. Been watching uh, New Japan. And a lot of times we talk, you know, I definitely have questions. Um, he's been tied up with work and stuff. So I didn't get a chance to get him on the show. But make sure you check out for the Realness Reacts. So moving on, AEW, folks. We got a new signee, a new executive vice president and his name is kenny omega i have to admit i'm a little disappointed kind of wanted to see omega in the wwe man i wanted to see him go against the likes of aj styles daniel bryan finn balor i know some of them he wrestled before but i wanted to see it in that wwe ring randy orton bobby Roode, um you know so many so many great people samoa joe mustafa ali but we're not going to get it. He decided to go with his buddies. He decided to go with his friends. Um, but congratulations to him. You know, he was a hot free agent. I'm just I'm just a guy who's a WWE mark. Not going to be ashamed to admit it. I'm a huge WWE fan since birth. And I wanted to see some of the best talent there. I want to see all the best talent there. I want to see these matches. I want to see him in a, have that WrestleMania moment. Unfortunately, we're not going to get that. Um... But I'll tell you a guy who I do want to see in AEW, and it's mainly so he won't be in WWE, and that is the animal, Batista. He talked with WWE, and then he went to talk to Chris Jericho. So he's in talks with AEW, which, you know, my buddy Corey says you can talk to anybody. Um, doesn't necessarily mean anything. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens with him. I don't think much is coming of it. That's just me. Um, and before I take my, another break, my last break, I got to make sure I mention uh, and offer my condolences to the Morales family. Um, we lost a legend in Pedro Morales, 
former WWE champion, former tag team champion, former intercontinental champion. Yes, the first triple crown champion. We see it a lot now. Um, in the 90s, it was a big deal to have, have a triple crown champion with guys like Brett the Hitman Hart, Big Daddy Cool Diesel, Shawn Michaels. But, um, you know, Pedro Morales, Morales, he set the tone for that. So he passed away. Um, so condolences go out to his family. So I'm going to go ahead and take my break. I almost hit the button earlier by accident, but got another podcast I want you to check out. What's up, guys? It is Jordan Curl. I am the host and producer of the On The Sticks podcast. You can hear the show every Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else that podcasts are heard. We discuss gaming, esports, and any other topics that's on your mind, featuring guest interviews as well as news from around esports. I hope you're tuned in. And now back to Break It Down with Brian H. Brought to you by The Wrestling World. And I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. So, before I get into From the Realm, I was on YouTube. You know, I was putting together this week's Wrestling for the Culture, which I want you to check out. Uh, after you check this out, make sure you check that out. Uh, I got some interviews coming up with a couple of the wrestlers. So, I'm really excited about that. Um, but, um, so I was on there and, you know, of course I came stuff that wasn't of the culture. Um, but I saw, you know, Nick Aldis and Marty Skrull. You know, um, they was talking about the Crockett Cup coming up. But instead, Marty said, no, I want the NWA World's title. So we got that match coming up. I would love to see Marty Squirrel win the NWA World's Heavyweight title. I don't know if it's going to happen. Another guy I was watching was Willie Mack taking on um, Jay Bradley. After he said, you know, Bradley kind of went out there and said, like, you know, I don't want to face you. I want to face... Uh, the NWA world champion. So felt disrespected, you know, him being the Nash, NWA national champion. Went out there and successfully defended that title. So there's a lot of great wrestling out there. You know, I didn't get a chance to catch up on MLW this week. But, you know, Impact Wrestlers still out there doing their thing. Shout out to my girl, Kiara Hogan, getting a win over another one of my girls. That's Allie. Um, and, you know, speaking of Willie Mack, him and Rich Swan, they were victorious over... OVE last week, so um, make sure, you know, I'll tell you one person, I'm always counting on for impact information, and that is my boy Terrence of Talking About Wrestling. Follow him at TW Talking About. So, now it's time to come from the realm. And now for our From the Realm segment where I answer your questions from the Facebook fan page, the Facebook group page, and the Twitter at Wrestling Realm. So, from the realm this week, we got um, all questions come from The Shark. Um, and his first question is, since Kenny Omega is now with AEW and chances of going to WWE may be slim, is there any guy or even team in ROH or AEW you possibly see in their career without going to the WWE? You know, I thought about this question, Shark, and I got to admit, man, I'm thinking the Briscoes. I just don't see it, you know. I think the Briscoes um, just think they are pretty much happy. Um, so I just don't see them going to the WWE. I think the time would have been maybe a couple of years ago, but they're not that old. They're not in their 40s. So I, I don't know. I just don't see it. That's just me, but. That would be my answer. Um, his next question. A lot of people seem to theorize that Becky may lose to Ronda at Mania. And the same with Seth, although speculation on the reason for Seth is because of another Saudi Arabia show. But we had both Royal Rumble winners lose last year at Mania Would having it repeat hurt the prestige of winning the Royal Rumble. So I don't think it hurts the prestige. I don't like it, but I think the Royal Rumble is old enough that people understand it's not always a guarantee that you're going to win the title at WrestleMania. You know, it was just two years in 
You know, it didn't go like Money in the Bank went some years before the first person didn't successfully cash in. It was just two years in with that stipulation where they didn't have the person win. And that was Shawn Michaels. You know, 93, Yoko. 94, Brett. 95, Shawn Michaels didn't win. 97, 90, and, um, Stone Cold didn't win. You know, 99, Vince McMahon didn't win. Uh, so, and then even 2000, The Rock didn't win. So I don't think it hurts the prestige. I think it just further emphasizes that it's not a guarantee but it would kind of suck for the women but then it would be kind of e equality you know because that would be two years in a row that the woman who won didn't win therefore never having a woman who won the royal rumble win the title that's the thing i don't know if they're thinking about that like you and i may be but it would kind of suck, but I don't think it hurts the prestige. Let's move on to his last question. And that is, with the villain challenging Nick Aldis for the NWA title, and of course the formation of villain enterprises, could this be the year Marty Skrull takes it to the next level? I think so. I think um, this dude is, you know, we talked about him on our Breakout Stars episode. Uh, he was one of the guys the real Dwayne Allen mentioned. Um Upon him mentioning, talking about AJ Styles, he said, you know, he found out a boss girl just from watching, looking for AJ Styles content. So I do think this could be his year. I would like to see it be his year. You know, I'm not going to lie. I was disappointed in his Ring of Honor World Championship match a year ago. But that was then. This is now. Let's see what happens. So, folks, that is going to do it for this week's episode of Break It Down with Brian H. Um, make sure you tune in each and every week. And then, of course, make sure you are following the Wrestling Realm. Uh, follow Dwayne Allen at Dwayne Allen 24. And then follow me at Brian H. Waters. Then subscribe down low, the Wrestling Realm, or on YouTube. If you're not listening, if you're driving your cars, pull over and subscribe. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Wrestling Realm. Participate in the conversations. Instagram, we got posts coming up. Make sure you comment, like, share with your friends, add it to your stories. Facebook, go on the Facebook, or I should say Facebook.com. Yes, I had it since it was called The Facebook. Go on Facebook.com, add us in, slash The Wrestling Realm, and then join the group. And then, of course, iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Overcast, uh, Podbean, Anchor, we're there. So, and guess what? If you're on Anchor and you say, you know, I like those brothers. I want to help these guys out. You know, I want to make a donation. Feel free. Go on Anchor. Hit the donate button. Support the podcast. Giving you this content for free. So, you know, I appreciate a dollar or two. Until the next time, folks, I'm Brian H. Waters. So long, everybody. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Break It Down with Brian H. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe down low and check out all the other stuff brought to you by The Wrestling Realm.